Hey guys, I just wanted to take some time to go over um, this kidney model with you with your handout because it's pretty complicated and some of this stuff shows up in several different places. So if you'll just um, take your handout and the kidney model starts on page seven. So here we are, we're gonna go through here and it continues on to the next page. So the first thing is going to be the cortex of the kidney. This is in two places. It's going to be the small part at the top. This is where generally all the glomerulus is going to be. So see there they are over there. That's in the cortex. On the zoomed in model, this whole region right here, that's the cortex. Now, next is the medulla or the medulla. Both of those are appropriate. That would be this entire rest of the kidney below the cortex. So here or over here, my tape's not quite long enough, but it goes all the way here. So that's the medulla. Next, we're gonna kind of start with some of the larger structures. So going back to over here, you're gonna have your minor calyx. This is where your collecting ducts are gonna drain into. So they're gonna form, and they're, I've got two of them labeled right down here. They're gonna come out from the bottoms of these pyramids. There's about five or six of them. And then those merge together into a major calyx, which is right here. And that's the only one open one you can see on this model, but this would be another major calyx as would right in here. So here and here on the inside would be, but this is the only place it's labeled. Um, the renal pelvis, that's this bottom part of the kidney where everything just comes together, all your calyces come together in the renal pelvis. And then after that is the ureter, so urine leaves here and goes on out the ureter, that's letter F, down to the bladder. Next, we're going to skip over to this very zoomed in glomerulus. So let's pick up over here. We are with letter G. So we're gonna be the parietal layer of Bowman's capsule. That would be this outside part here. We didn't talk about that in lecture. I only briefly mentioned it. H is the visceral layer. That would be this one. This is here where there are those podocytes. We're not gonna label the podocytes. That's what I is. It's not on the test. Don't worry about it. Next, moving on, J, the glomerular capillaries. Looks like my J fell off, but it's these. These are the glomerular capillaries right in here. So this is, this is your capillaries, but they're covered by podocytes. So here, this would be J. Okay, the afferent arteriole. That's gonna be what's coming in. On this model, it starts here. Blood's coming in from this direction, right there. And then here's the, then it goes through the glomerulus and then it exits right through there. The efferent arterial. Next, the juxtaglomerular cells of the afferent arterial. That would be this here. These are the juxtaglomerular cells. So look, they're right by the glomerulus. That's how you know this is the afferent arterial because this is broken open and they come in contact with the distal convoluted tubule right here and these are the macula densa cells so these are the things that communicate with each other to regulate the GFR. O is the proximal convoluted tubule this is in several places so after we get into Bowman's capsule here it immediately goes into the proximal convoluted tubule. Easier to see on the nephron I've got two nephrons labeled when you're, you have to get oriented to the nephron. When you get oriented to the nephron, you find the glomerulus. So here's the glomerulus and here's the glomerulus. Now, I'm gonna go through this one on the left here first and then I'll go through this one here on the right. So immediately we get to O, which is the proximal convoluted tubule. Then, We go down the descending loop of Henle, because that come, always comes after the proximal convoluted tubule. And then we go up, so this is the ascending loop of Henle, on around 
here is your distal convoluted tubule which empties into the collecting duct. Now the collecting duct can handle several nephrons at once. Now you'll notice that this nephron is backwards so don't memorize it just find the glomerulus. So from the glomerulus you have the proximal convoluted tubule then you go down the descending loop of Henle you come up the ascending loop of Henle into the distal convoluted tubule on down into the collecting duct. S is the collecting duct. All right, um, just for completeness, I put the distal convoluted tubule over here as well because that's where these macula densa cells are. That's the distal convoluted tubule in this model. Now, let's go back over to our large scale kidney and we'll talk about the pyramid. Pyramid, that's pretty easy, it's this thing. It looks like a pyramid. In 3D, it's a pyramid. Here, it's kind of a triangle. Next is the papilla. That's this little light portion down at the bottom or the top of the pyramid, if you prefer. V, the renal vein, let's go over here. V for vein, it's the one in blue. W, I made sure to underline that so you don't think it's an M. That's your renal artery. Next, you have the segmental artery. That's what branches right off the renal artery and the renal vein, but, and it's gonna divide the kidney into several segments. So all of these here would be segmental um, arteries. From there, it's going to go again, and this would be your interlobar artery. So this thing is kind of like a lobe of the kidney goes right between those pyramids. From there, Go over here to Z. This makes an arch. So that the arcuate makes an arch. Arcuate makes an arch. And then lastly, you have the interlobular arteries and veins. And that, that's these tiny ones right up here. So hopefully that was helpful. And good luck. Happy studying.